Hey everybody, Mike here at MH Tutorials, and welcome back to a new video. All right, well guys, today we're gonna do something cool. We're gonna look at Marmoset Toolbag 2.08, okay? Now, Marmoset Toolbag is a real-time rendering um, package, and it's pretty neat. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run through the basics of you know how to set it up and how to use it and so forth, and we'll kind of talk about what you can do with it. Okay, cool. So Whenever you open um, Marmoset, this is pretty much your basic uh, default view. And you see that you have an image down here and you have an image up here. This is your main window. And what you see here is an HDRI image, okay? So this is an image that is uh, giving a light to whatever model you decide to load into this application, okay? So you can rotate this uh, pretty similar to what you do in Maya. Uh, you hold down the Alt key and left click, and then you can kind of click and drag, and you see that you're in a room, okay? And in this case, I believe this one is called Museum. Now, what this does is when you load in your uh, model, your 3D model, whether you made it in um, you know, Maya or 3ds Max or whatever, it's going to be lighted based on this space here. So if you move over to this window, you can see that this window is now selected as a default. And down here, you can actually tweak the light in your scene. And I'll just move it around a bit so you can see it a bit better. Okay. So you can decide to make that quite dark to very, very dark or pull that way up. And depending on the image that you loaded, okay, you can also, in some cases, um, tweak the blur of the image, all right? Now, this is not the only image that you have available. If you decide that you want to use one of your own uh, HDRI images, you can load that up here, or you can go to the presets. So I'm gonna click on one of these presets, and there are quite a few. So let's go with, um, I don't know, let's go with Castle Sunset. So we're gonna click on that. We're gonna click on Done. And as you can see, this one is fairly blurry. But again, it's not about this image, it's about the lighting. Okay, let's see if we can tweak that a little bit. And you know, based on the images that you select, one will be uh, sharper than the other. Just for the heck of it, let's try another one. We'll do this. Okay, this is nice and crisp, okay? All right. So we use this. Now, like I said, you can tweak the brightness and so forth. And that is based on the fact that you have selected up here your sky. Now here you have your main camera and you can tweak that as well. You've got all sorts of settings that you can uh, um, tweak, but it's, uh, it's better to do that when we have our model in place, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna load up a model, all right? So we're gonna go up to File and I'm gonna to go to import model. Now I created something very, very basic just to demonstrate this. So I'm gonna to go to my desktop and I'm gonna call this steel board and hit open, okay? So now my object is in place. Now, like I said, you can move this around and how do we do that? Once again, hold down the Alt key and your left mouse. And you can see that this is, you know, just a kind of cube thing that's going on there, right? And you can see that the light is reflecting on the surface of my object based on my HDRI image, like I explained before, okay? All right, so when you select this guy by clicking on it, you get controls. And these controls allow you to move it around like you would do in your 3D package. You can take the, um, the armchair and move it. You can rotate it. You can hit uh, Control-Z to go back, similar to what you would do in Maya. And, you know, this can be anything. This can be a car, a robot, wherever you want, all right? And up here, as we load that, you can see that our model is called uh, Polycube 2. I didn't rename that. And it has a Lambert material attached to it, okay? Now here, if you go to your transformations, you have a lot of options. You can manually do a rotation in all directions. You can even scale it if you like, but we're not gonna do that. We're gonna hit Control-Z to go back. And now it's time to load some uh, information onto our object because obviously this is not just a cube, okay? 
So we're going to select our cube and we're going to go up to material section and we're going to click on a new. All right. And our new material, we're going to go down to the albedo map. And here we're going to load the uh, color map or diffuse map that we created or that I created in this case in Maya. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to go to my diffuse. All right. Now, nothing going on yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the default material. We're going to hit delete. We're going to click on the Lambert material. We're going to hit delete. And the default is not disappearing. And then we're going to left click and drag. And we're going to release this material on top of our object. All right. And as you can see, there is now a structure going on here. OK. Now, what we can do if we want to kind of see this from all angles is we'll go to animation. And here you have sliders where you can use a scene turntable. Okay, I'll hit play. And you can see that now my object is rotating. But I can also decide to select my sky turntable and start to rotate my environment. Okay, like so. And you have the same deal with your camera. You can just move that up and down if you want. Obviously, you don't have to. I'll just reset that. And there you go. But we're not quite done yet because we have our diffuse loaded. Okay. But I want to load some additional information. Now, already here, you see you can load a gloss map. You can load um, you know, all sorts of maps. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to go in and I'm going to load a normal map that I created. So I'm just going to click on this guy. I'm going to stop this information for a sec. I'm going to click on my normal map. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to find the normal map that I created here. And as you can see, what I did is I created a normal map with an a normal map with an alpha and omega sign. Okay, so that is baked into my normal map. Now I'm going to add one more map, uh, an occlusion map. So I'm going to scroll down to occlusion. I'm going to hit the options here. I'm going to select occlusion, and I'm going to go down and select that. And I'll find the occlusion map that I created. There we go. All right. So this is what we got. You can see that's a pretty cool effect. And you can zoom in and zoom out with your middle mouse. You can kind of pull that around and look at it from all angles. But what is very, very cool about this is the following. Um, if you make uh, work on a regular basis, you probably heard of ArtStation, OK? ArtStation.com. Now, ArtStation.com has a contract with Marmoset, or a you know, kind of partnership. And what Marmoset has is a Marmoset viewer that you can export. So instead of posting a picture of this object on my um, ArtStation, I can actually um, post an animation. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to, um, just give me one sec here, viewer export. Okay. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to call this test. And I'll call this my Kermis uh, link. Well, I don't have that yet, right? So right here, I'm going to save this, let's say, on my desktop. And I'll call this Marmo. Come on. Marmo set viewer. Okay. And there we go. Texture quality high. Uh, right to HTML, that's fine. Uh, width, we'll leave that like so. And we'll select export. There you go. Now we'll just pick that up. All right, well, here it is. It's called uh, Marmoset Viewer. It's on my desktop. So now I can switch to my ArtStation page. So I'm just going to go up here and I just prep this. So create new artwork. Uh, we'll just call this uh, 
test viewer. Okay. And instead of add images or add video, I'm going to select add murmur set viewer. It's going to ask me to pick that up from whatever location I saved it. In this case, my desktop. And I'm going to click open. And we'll just give that a sec. So you can see that it's loaded up here, all right? Now, normally you would add, you know, all descriptions and tags and all that stuff. We're not going to do that. I'm just going to hit publish. And we'll give that a second as well. Shouldn't too, take too long. It's just uh, waiting for the website to respond. Okay. Looks like it has been uh, done. So I'm just going to close this out. I'm going to go to my normal page. Okay. So here is the image of our object that we just loaded. Now you can see that it has a different icon up here. Normally this is a video and you know you have uh, images and so forth. This one is a different image. So we're just going to click on that. And we're going to wait until that's loaded. Now you can see this is pretty blurry, but as soon as we hit play, it's going to start to clear up. I'll just hit that. It's loading up. Here's our clear image. And what is really cool now is when I hold down the Alt key and my left mouse, I can check out my object. So there you go. I thought that was pretty cool. So I wanted to share that with you. If you have any questions, as always, let me know. And thank you guys very much for watching. See you guys next time. Bye.